Wrestling Observer Live, Andrew Zarian here, Sunday edition. One thing we didn't touch on during our Dynamite review, because I think it's going to lead into a longer conversation here, and that's the huge announcement. Now, there was a lot of speculation on this announcement, right? A lot of people are speculating what it could be. Is it the streaming deal? That's probably not done yet. Uh, is it a, a signee? Is it a stadium show? And the one that was correct is that the partnership with New Japan has happened, finally, two years, three years later than it should have. Uh, New Japan and AEW will be putting on a show, Forbidden Door, in uh, June. Is it June 26? Let me see. Forbidden Door. You know what? I'm going to go to my producer here, MG Geek. We're talking June 26th here? Yes, indeed. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, now he could go away. There you go. That's how we do it. He just goes away after these questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to do this throughout the entire show. I'm just going to go to him for a question, and then I'm just going to cut him off. Uh, June 26th, live on pay-per-view from Chicago, from the uh, from a huge building here, right? United Center. This is big. This is a big show. Uh, and this is not going to be how Ring of Honor did their joint show at MSG a couple years ago, which I was at. I, I thought it was a fantastic show, but, you know, it was interesting to me because that show was very telling of what people thought of the Ring of Honor product. And there was one example that, that will kind of get you to understand what was happening. People were so hyped for that, man, for that show. Okada was the main event. Do you know how many people I saw walk out of that building? during the ring of honor world heavy world title match uh, people were just walking out they didn't care anymore and, and that was and i looked at the people i was with and i said oh boy this can't be good because everything from the new japan side was fantastic they also had that that debacle with enzo and cash showing up and people lost their minds over it but uh, i don't even think that was a big issue i think the fact that people walked out of a world title match for a company, you know, you're, you're at MSG. You're, you're going to stay till the end, and people didn't want to stay at the end. They wanted to catch something else. Very telling, and it was not a good sign. It was kind of their swan song and for their demise, but this is not going to be that kind of show. You're going to have AEW people facing off against New Japan people, so now the, the, the conversation becomes such a different thing here, right? Like, who do you want to see? What matches do you want to see happen? Danielson Tanahashi? Danielson Okada? You know, uh, who else? Punk and, and Kenta? I mean, Punk and Kenta has to be the match, right? Has to be the match. You know what? MG Geek, my producer. I'm going to go to him again. What's the one match you want to see happen? The one match I want to see yeah. happen? Yeah. I would, I'm doing... See, here's the thing. is I don't... I, I, availability, right, is going to be an issue here. Like, Koto Ibushi is who I want to see. But but he's still, see, he's still banged up. Uh, right. It, you know... Um, if there's one, Zach Saber Jr. and uh, Brian Danielson. Ah, that. that's where you went, huh? All day long. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. And I think you... that one's doable. Mm -hmm. That one's very doable. But listen, the, these are these are you know if you're able to put together a show like this once a year, right? Mm -hmm. Let let's let's get bigger picture, and I want to come back to this big picture. Once a year, you got Ring of Honor already. You have you have some sort of work relationship with Impact. You now have that work relationship with NJPW. You have a work relationship with DDT. I, I, I how do you? I, I mean, to me, this is speaking a stadium. I know we're back on the stadium conversation. Apparently, that's what's on my mind this week. But we're back to a stadium. You know, can AEW do twenty five, thirty thousand people in a stadium? Absolutely, hundred percent. Can they do fifty, sixty? I don't know. That that's still. I don't know what the answer to that is. The only metric that I have for that. The only metric I have is that is that initial uh, crazy, uh, you know, whatever the seventy five thousand people on queue for that first show. Listen, that's not. I get, I get that. That's extremely impressive. I get it, and it means something. But it doesn't mean you're gonna have seventy five thousand people wanting to buy tickets. I was in that queue just to see where I fall in the queue. I had no intention on buying a ticket, but I was in the queue to see where I fall. But a match like this, you know, forty fifty thousand. I don't know, but definitely twenty thirty. Definitely. I, I, I think this is a very interesting positioning for the company. And, and, you know, what's crazy to me is that all online, you know, I took a week off from everything. I, I, I needed to, to hit the reset uh, to the point that both producers, John and, and, and Matt here, were like, hey, are you okay? I'm like, dude, I'm fine. 
I am. I have shut down. I need a break from life. I, I took a week off. But, you know, I, I did go on Twitter, unfortunately, uh, during the announcement. And it was a lot of nobody's going to care about this. Casual fans don't care about this. You're not going to grow your product. Listen, I get it. I get casual fans may not care about it. But you know who does? There's plenty of people that do. And, and I'm sure there's, there's more than more than people think that would be very much interested in that show. I'm super psyched about it. That It's cool stuff. I hope that they continue doing this. I hope it works. Uh, I don't... I don't know if... I don't know if this will be, a, you know, a semi-regular thing. I hope it does. I hope I hope they do great stuff with this. But, you know, some of these matches you could think about. You know, like we said, Kota Ibushi. You know, what is he doing? Danielson, who do you pair him up with? And you're going to have people lose and win. Uh, I heard Dave and Garrett talking on the show. Uh, this morning when they did Observer Radio, when I listened to it, and Dave was saying, you know, maybe you switch a title. Why not? I think that's cool. You could switch a title. Are you going to switch a world title? No, but maybe you switch something. Ah, oh, man, that's going to be really cool stuff. 